Matt? How is it that I'm even talking to you right now, back here in the back? Well, like I was, like I was telling Big Mike, whatever uh, reflexes I had left wanted me to continue fighting, continue in the cage, and pulled me through. Um, and, and like I said, we were able to, able to scr scramble, get back on top, get where we need to be, and uh, got my check, and here we are. Do you, I mean, do you even remember the knee? I mean, did you see it coming? Do you remember, how, what do you remember after that? I mean, how, how long did it take to, to get like, your senses back? Like I told Big Mike, I was in control that whole fight according to what I had going on. If you guys saw something else, that, that wasn't me. <laughs> um, once you were able to kind of recover and, and hold on, could you feel his energy just had kind of completely sapped at that point? That's what it, it seemed to look like watching it on the screen. You know what we mentioned, the, the first round uh, really went my way. I was able to use my wrestling to crowd and control him. Um, second round, I know that was the same game plan, but uh, my opponent, uh, uh, he really, uh, Jose really had my number and uh, was following into that. Lucky for me, reflexes took over. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, we were able to keep on keeping on and, and get that W where we needed it. He, he had kind of had a similar situation happen in his fight against Anthony Johnson. Had you watched that fight and was that something that you knew going in that maybe he was the kind of fighter who could, could hurt you? Um, but you, but you'd be able to persevere and, and he, and he'd fade later on. Like I've said before, you know, I, I don't do a whole lot of film watching. Um, I have a great coaching staff who kind of digests that for me. And, uh, you know, they saw that coming, you know, they, they knew that he was looking for a big shot. I, that, um, I was going to be taking shots and he was going to be looking for either a big knee or up top that big overhand that he was trying to throw in the first. Um, and if, if I had been listening to them, 100% following through the game plan they gave me. Uh, it might not have been as uh, contentious or, or exciting, but uh, I, I believe that they, they had my best interest in heart. Um, so yeah, to, to, put it into, to put it out plainly, uh, it was hard for me to go off plan because I didn't really come in there with a plan. <laughs> Uh, Makes sense. So yeah, I, I, as far as watching my opponents um, before the fights, not doing a lot of that. But I'll be, I'll be watching the real exciting match apparently <laughs> after, uh, and and we're gonna be learning and maybe uh, keeping our keeping our head a little better defended while we shoot in. I mean, nobody wants to get cracked like that, but but the fact that you were able to push through it and and basically dominate after that. Is that the kind of positive that you take out of a fight like this? And, and down the road, will it be good that that happened to you? You know, um, I, I, I think that just looking generally at my face, you would guess that I kind of have a tough, thick skull. But it's, it's nice to be able to, to show the, the efficacy of that thick, wrapped around skull. Uh, yeah, it, it, and you know, I'm, I'm letting you guys in on a little secret. That's that's the first time I've I've been rocked like that in a, in a fight. Anyone who's seen my previous ones, even my loss against uh, um, fighter coming out today in the co-main, uh, Anglicos, um, I, I don't take a whole lot of damage, a whole lot of big rocks, and uh, this fight just goes to show that I can I can take those and I can keep uh, I can keep pushing that pace and being offensive after. So. Like I think you said, it's it's going to be a, maybe a good thing down the road after I take a week off and rest up a little. You said that in your mind, you were in control the entire fight. And the way that things turned out very well may have been. Is that how you were able to stay as calm as you did? Because the adjustments on the arm bar, I just thought for sure you were going to tap. Yeah, you know, um, I there's a. Uh, there's a there's a uh, a common thought and philosophy that yourself is defined as your constant stream of consciousness going through. And like I said, I didn't really get that part where I was in trouble. So to me, I was able to stay calm and collected and uh, keep in control the whole time. Keep that pressure on, um, you know, uh, getting out of the arm bar kind of on reflex. Uh, we're out there and, you know, I, I know that I'd put it on him a little bit. Maybe if he had caught that a little earlier, found me in that arm bar a little sooner, it may have gone his way. But um, 
pushing forward, you know, both of us the way we were. I was able to get out of it and, and uh, reaffirm control and, and get after it that fight. Excellent, excellent. So is that what you attribute your ability to just have that workmanlike attitude and continue to push on and on to? Yeah, you know, and, and a, a big part of that is just wrestling. Uh, we talk about it all the time, and, and you talk to anyone who's who's wrestled in the Midwest before, and they know it's just all about that grind, you know. Um, wrestling match is only seven minutes, but practice is 90, 120 minutes of just straight grind and push. And so, you know, it's it's kind of in my – it's kind of just um, dug into my unconsciousness, my DNA. So even if I'm not everything functioning up top, I can count on my body to keep pushing through and uh, reaffirm control and keep my hips in the right place. Last question. Did you make it to Pappy's? Haven't been to Pappy's yet. You know, uh, just keep it. I, I, I kind of have a thing. I'm call me old school, but before the weigh ins, I like to find a nice pasta joint. Get that, get my carb on, make sure I got energy for the next day. But uh, I, I, I definitely found it on Google Maps and, and put a little bookmark there. We'll be hitting it up. Uh, first of all, congratulations, Ox. You make it extremely difficult for me to do my job and be professional <laughs> when you fight like that. We're not allowed to cheer with to be professional, and you made it really hard. Uh, first, I got to ask you about the slam. You had him up there for a minute. Were you contemplating what to do with him for a second, or did you know what you were going to do? Um, anyone who's seen me before knows that I, I really like dipping down for that, uh, what we're, we've been calling an Iranian lift. Uh, it, it works really well, especially for guys against the cage where they can't put that pressure back. Mm -hmm. They either got to go over the top of me or they got to go straight down, which either way, I'm usually strong enough to pull them up. Um, yeah, you hit the nail on the head. I was deciding whether we were going to jump backwards or if we were going to lay him down flat or push him over to the side, it kind of depends on what he's doing with his hands. Eventually what happened, he's trying to scoot, he's pushing his hands away, hasn't really committed to the full front or can't take him back. So we just decided to dump him off to the side. And I think that was the right course of action. It kind of put him on his back, rocked him a little, little bit. Um, it, it, it was fairly obvious that he had a, a good jujitsu kind of game. So he was all right being down and on his back, and we were able to capitalize on that in the first round and really start pounding on him. Okay, you had him hurt multiple times with the ground and pound. Are you surprised it didn't get stopped? Yeah, he's, he's real tough, and there was a couple times I was throwing hooks, I was throwing straights, I was throwing hammer fists, trying to mix in some, trying to mix in some elbows there. Um, and you know, there, there was a couple times where you could tell that my, my flurry was starting to slow down just because he was doing such a good job defending cover himself up and, and keeping enough keeping enough moving in place so the ref didn't call it um definitely was looking for that finish in the first we were on top of him so long throw that ground and pound um but you know we can't take too long being surprised and astonished and outraged this isn't the wwe where we can what was that it was yeah. a three count you got to keep pressing on and uh doing what works so that's where we're at you look like you said something at the end of the second can i ask you what you said I don't know if you said it to yourself or if you were upset it didn't get stopped, but you, you know, I, I have, uh, I have some teammates back at Extreme Couture that says, you know, sometimes you just gotta, you gotta talk yourself up a little bit. And after a tough round, like that second, you know, I had to, uh, reaffirm like, Hey, you know, you're, you, you, he's in here fighting you. Uh, you gotta reaffirm control. You gotta make sure that he's, he's getting the damage done to him. You're in control. This is your fight. Let's go. You know, just a little self-talk. Mm -hmm. All right, congratulations, Alex. You made a ton of fans happy tonight. Congratulations. All right, we'll take a couple more. Kobe? Hi, Alex. Ridiculous hey. victory, buddy. I, I, I've been in MMA since the beginning, and I don't think anyone's ever taken a shot that hard and then come away with a W. I'll take that as a W. I'm making, <laughs> making records in a weird way. That sounds about up my alley. Obviously, the adrenaline's pumping, but are, are you feeling it yet? Are you feeling that shot? Kind of feels like after you go to the dentist and you got that sheet kind of kind of pressured and kind of stuck up a little bit. I'll, I'll be feeling a little bit. We're going to throw some ice on there and see if we can calm it down. But yeah. <laughs> now, you said you've never been rocked like that in, in an actual match. But what about during training? Okay. 
I, if, I, I hope that he watches, but I've rocked one other time like this. It was during my high school wrestling days, and we were, we were drilling mat returns. You think not a place where you're going to end up getting knocked out, but a buddy of mine trapped the arm, got a good lift, brought me right out of my head. Not quite blackout, but things got, things got gray. <laughs> so um, then I toss out, tossing out to my, my buddy Levi Dish back in the Boyd area for, for browning me out for my first time. <laughs> All right. Ridiculous victory, buddy. Thank you. Last one here, Syed. Hello, Alex. Uh, that was an amazing display of heart, uh, sir. I just want to thank you so much for that, honestly, for that display of heart. I really appreciate that performance. I just want to ask you, going into the third round, did you feel that you had him? Like I said, I was, as far as my stream of consciousness goes, myself was, uh, was winning that fight the whole time. Uh, yeah, so I, I was feeling really good. And I, uh, I have great coaches in my corner that were letting me know, like, hey, you got to bring it. You got to watch this big. Uh -oh. You got to watch these big shots coming. He's looking to finish. But, you know, when it came to that third, I think that he was uh, kind of a little dis uh, similar to how I felt after the first, after giving him so much ground and pound. Like, man, this guy just won't give. So uh, in that third, I was able to come out. I, I knew I had to get after him again like I did in the first, maintain control, get back on top. Uh, gave me the back fairly quick and sunk that neck. Uh, of course, I was looking to, to throw a couple more punches and pay him back for what he did to my face. But uh, the neck's open. You got to take it. Thanks a lot, Alex. Appreciate it, man. Thank you.